with David. Uh, I went to New York for 10 months. I left last October and I got back four days before college. Um, it was an experience to say the least. Um, before I went there, I suppose I had a lot of preconceptions, as everyone does, of the city, and I knew that I'd be there for a long time. Um, so I didn't really rush into getting everything done. I took my time to get used to the city, get to know it, and I suppose when you do go to somewhere for that long, you do get to know it. Um, so I went over one of my friends, he uh, graduated as an engineer, so a bit of computation there. Um, but I suppose on the preconceptions, I, you're, everyone's preconceptions, I don't think you're far wrong when it comes to New York. Every second movie is, it shows you a part of it and it's all true. You look at Sex in the City, they're walking around everywhere. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's exactly where you're going to see it. So, uh, I thought that it might be, and it, it didn't fail to impress, but I wanted to look at it from, um, I wanted to gauge it on a theoretical level as well, in terms of architecture. So, I said, well, I'm in New York, I've heard a lot about um, the book Delirious New York. So, um, this is an image which really kind of changed my way of thinking about the city. Um, before I went, I wasn't big into reading, first to third year, I'll admit, but I said I'll give it a go while I'm over. <laughs> um, and this is, uh, he draws uh, on the delirium of the city, and especially Dali, the surrealist painter. And this is Millet's Angelus on top, and this is Dali's interpretation. So he's basically taking something, turning it on his head and showing it in a different way. He's um, taking something that is absolutely insane and presenting it in a completely normal way. So if you see on the bottom image here, uh, he's taking the, it might be clear, but he's taking the wheelbarrow and the fork that's in the background that he's turned them into the people and made the people the objects, the tools in the background. And then he goes away into like a sexual tension between the two characters. Um, but it it kind of when I think of New York, I think of this image because things that are crazy are presented in a very normal way, just like this. This everyone's heard of the naked cowboy, but this woman walks around Times Square, um, and people don't even bat an eyelid. It's a very normal thing. Um, roller dancing, Central Park, beach volleyball, anything that they feel they need, they will create it. It's artificial, but it's brilliant. It, it just feels real when you're there. Um, and this happens in every aspect of life, or every aspect of culture. They've robbed everyone's culture and shoved it into every corner of the city. Um, it is an image of Central Park around 75th Street and Times Square, and as you see on the map, they're quite close to each other, everywhere. It's all made up of the different districts, different neighborhoods, and everywhere is totally different. Um, but I liked the parks the best in the city. It, but they, for me, there was always a sense of the city behind them, but they, they wouldn't be as good if you didn't have the intensity of the city, this craziness going on in like Times Square. It's only when you get to the parks then you hit a release and you just, you, when you're, it, you have to walk through all this craziness to get to them. And you can just sit down then and look at them from a distance and you're glad to be out of it, to be honest. Um, but even in the craziness, I mean, there's like a Celtic cross in the middle of Times Square around all this. And you find these things that just don't fit in but they're just forced in there, and uh, I found it hard to um, keep rooted with architecture because I wasn't surrounded by anyone. I didn't go away with any other architects, um, as some people did. So it, it was difficult to try and um, feed back into it, keep an interest going. So I was in contact with Peter uh, while I was away, and I got. Um, 
you recommended some different buildings for me to go and see, and I tried to make all of them before I got one, but this is one of the first ones that I went to visit, it was the New York Times building. And each time, I used to go off on a Saturday by myself into the city, and I'd go to a building, and sometimes spend the entire day uh, sitting under drawing. Um, so, sometimes it would be just a drawing exercise, other times you'd be trying to um, understand the space, the movement through it. Uh, at that again, there's the Guggenheim and the Whitney Museum. Um, so, it, there, there were good drawing exercises, especially in the Whitney Museum, was the actual movement up through the building. It's amazing because all the floors are different heights consecutively. Um, so the, to even understand the way the stairs move up, you actually have to go there, experience it, because to try and draw it yourself without being there and seeing it, it's, it's very difficult to do. Um, the Guggenheim, everyone probably knows this building, but um, very interesting again. I've always included the addresses, um, because you're always aware, well, you might not be aware, but I think it's very important that you see how spread out everything is between streets um, because there's so many different districts. Um, this is one of my favourite buildings uh, while I was there. It's the American Folk Art Museum next to Mona. Um, I actually went back here a few times. I went back twice to draw it. But you start in, they recommend you start on the fifth floor and make your way down um, through the building. And uh, I was talking to Peter about it afterwards and he said that they didn't find it appropriate for the, music, the type of museum as I thought it was brilliant for the type of museum because they have small artefacts from um, American history and it's a small museum but the materiality of the ground as you move through um, is constantly changing and it changes in terms of your walkway of where you're supposed to be moving and where you're supposed to be stopping. Um, and I loved it. Um, when I, it was difficult to find work at the very start. Um, there wasn't any. So I tried to look for work with architectural firms and with no luck. Um, so I started labouring on sites and then I was doing a bit of carpentry and I got into a construction company and eventually ended up in their office. And um, for about six, seven months, I was cost estimating and project, doing project management um, with them. So I would end up, uh, after a while, I was pricing all our jobs. So at some stages, we'd have 10 jobs a week that you have to price and get out. Um, you'd be ordering materials and site, dealing with clients. Um, so more so, I'd, I kind of realized what I don't want to do while I'm working there. I sit in front of a computer all day, just that. Um, but I did get an amazing opportunity to, um, they asked me to update the website. I never did web design before or anything, but I googled it. And uh, it's not there, but sorry. Um, but I had to be the photographer as well. So um, I want to show this because there's, uh, working for a builder directly, a construction company, it's all commercial. My boss, he wouldn't ask how the project's going, he'd ask, are you making me money? Um, so, in doing the photography, I was looking at a lot of other builders' websites and there weren't images about space and how people use the space. Like, this is a picture from the Highline and, uh, that I took and for me it shows how people might use it, how people do use the space. But when I was taking it for a website, it was just to make something look nice and to sell it. And it's just something that I had to learn to do. And I one of we deal we dealt with two companies. There's possibly two different companies at the same time, because um, union and non-union is a big thing in New York, and you have subcontracting and uh, uh, general contracting as well. So um, they asked me to design a logo for one of their um, companies. So uh, this is the logo I did for the union company. And. <coughs> 